Hey there, friends. Um, all right, so uh, today I thought I'd show you something cool about Code Sandbox. Uh, Code Sandbox is an online editor for a bunch of different things, and uh, yeah, has some really really cool features. Um, specifically, contributing to GitHub projects right in the browser. So I'm going to go ahead and click Create Sandbox here, and it's going to give me a couple of different options. Um, eventually, when it loads. So um, yeah, you can do like a vanilla JavaScript project that's using Parcel and React and Vue, Preact, a whole bunch of other things that has a CLI and you can also import from GitHub. And that is the cool feature that I'm gonna show you today. So I'm not actually gonna create one, I've already created one and we're gonna contribute to it um, right in GitHub. So here's my dashboard um, to Code Sandbox. And I've got this project called Downshift. So we're not we're not actually going to load Downshift into um, Code Sandbox. I don't think that would work um, because it it does have to be like using one of those supported uh, templates um, for it to actually uh, be able to load the project. Um, and Downshift isn't isn't like a an app or anything. It's a library. But Downshift is using uh, Code Sandbox for its examples. So we're in the process of migrating some old Code Sandbox examples to a single repo that we load into Code Sandbox. And that repo is this downshift examples repo. And I created it originally with Code Sandbox and then used Code Sandbox to create the repository. And um, and uh, yeah, so if we actually, maybe I should show, um, I'll like, you can load up a code sandbox because they've got this neat feature. If you do import from GitHub, then you can actually just take the URL and paste it in here. And uh, the converted sandbox URL is basically sandbox, uh, code sandbox.io slash s slash GitHub slash everything else. And um, what's cool about this URL is you can actually um, uh, reference specific branches. So here we have tree master to get on the master branch. If I had another branch, then tree, whatever that branch name is. And then I can uh, take this URL and paste it in here and it just adds tree master. I'm pretty sure you can even do like specific commits and everything right in here. So it's basically take everything after github.com and paste it in after s github. Um, so yeah, that opens up into the code sandbox. And in here, the way that I've got this um, situated is um, I've got ordered examples and then other examples. So I say, go through these first. These will kind of incrementally teach you things you should know about uh, about uh, downshift. And then here are specific things, like if you wanted to see how to use um, downshift to create the Gmail um, recipients thing, for example. And then here I say, you turn on current module view in the upper right hand of the browser. And uh, then it'll take whatever uh, module you have currently open here and whatever the default export is is what it's going to uh, So this default export is what it's going to render here and now I can do this um, Use these and whatever. It's pretty cool so that is um, uh, That is that so let's let's go ahead and make a contribution here. So I'm going to go into the index um, and I want to make a change. So you, you pop this open and we'll say downshift examples. Let's see, um, in code here, we'll, we'll capitalize this properly code sandbox. There we go. So now I, um, you see that it actually automatically updates everything, uh, right away, but you can actually, um, uh, save the file. And what happens when you save it, uh, you can hit command S when you're focused in here or hit save. Um, it's going to make a fork of the code sandbox for you um, for uh, to persist all of your changes. And so now that that change has been persisted and I get a little bit of a different view here. So before it was, it, um, it didn't show me these little um, options here because I hadn't actually, I wasn't in an actual code sandbox instance. It just loaded up the uh, code sandbox um, for the repo. So it shows me the files, it shows me all these things, and I can I can do some things, but I can't do everything until I've forked it. Uh, and so once I've forked it, then I can uh, look at some of that information. This this is now my sandbox, so when, when you do this, this will be your code sandbox. 
um, and you can change the project info. You can do anything that you want to because it's a fork. Um, you can add and remove files. And then there's this GitHub thing that we're going to look at here in a second. You can deploy this to now, which is like pretty rad. Um, change the configuration and you can even go live. So um, yeah, this will be interesting. I'll just paste this in here for any of you watching live and you can jump in. And I'm going to turn this into a classroom. So people who join can't just um, start editing. But uh, yeah, so that's that's the idea here. So let's look at the GitHub specifically. Uh, looks like somebody is watching, hello. Um, and we can look at our changes. It's not going to let me preview my changes, which is unfortunate um, that that feature doesn't exist. This is a beta feature after all, uh, but I can make a commit. So I can say, hey there, and I can, um, or here, let's see, fix uh, code sandbox casing. And I can commit it directly because I'm the owner of the repo. I'm not sure what would happen if I was contributing to a repo I don't own. Maybe it doesn't show the button or it's disabled or something. But I'm going to go ahead and open a PR. And so what it does is it forks a repository and creates a, a pull request. And um, yeah, and it's done. And it's um, going to open the new sandbox that is um, the sandbox for that PR, which is actually pretty cool. It also looks like it'll open up that uh, PR2 as a pop-up. Um, or it, um, yeah, it looks like it doesn't actually um, make the PR for you. It just um, enables you to make the PR. So it, it makes the branch, makes the fork. Since I own it, it actually just uses my repo. Um, and so it just makes the branch. And so now with this, you have uh, this URL that you can paste and say, um, check it out here. And that actually, if you're contributing to one of my uh, projects, specifically downshift examples, please do that because uh, that makes it a lot easier for me to um, to see what changes you're making and things. Uh, but then I can uh, click create pull request, and um, and then somebody can come in and open it right up and see what it looks like, which I think is pretty pretty awesome. So anyway, that's uh, yeah, that's pretty much all I wanted to show about this. Um, and please feel free to uh, contribute these examples. We've got a whole bunch of these that I need to migrate over, um, and I've got um, a really awesome contributor. I want to give a shout out to to this um, Alex um, friend here. He's been doing a ton of really awesome stuff. And why can't I? There we go. A ton of awesome stuff in the. Uh, downshift project. So a huge thank you to Alexander um, for his contributions um, on the downshift project. He's made a couple of these migrations. Um, but yeah, so just the basic idea is you uh, take a project that uh, supports um, uh, GitHub import with um, code sandbox. So normally I'll, I'll just create a code sandbox and then create a GitHub repo out of that. Um, when, when you create the sandbox here, um, I'll just fork this one really quick. Um, then you go into GitHub. Uh, I, I guess it's based off of another repository, but uh, maybe we could make another fork and make another repo. But anyway, once you have a repo created, then you can just import it using that URL scheme. And, um, and then people can contribute right in the browser. It's really awesome. Um, and uh, yeah, I use it. I'm actually using it for um, advanced React component patterns as well. So like, it's really awesome for instruction too, where I can um, just have this this repo and people can interact with it and even make pull requests right from the browser. Um, it even runs your test. Code Sandbox just like blows my mind. It's so awesome. So anyway, that's it for me. Uh, let me look and see if anybody had questions. Um, do a lot of debel developers use browser-based editors like this on a daily um, base basis to work on projects? What are the pros and cons to develop like this? So I actually used Code Sandbox to develop Downshift, and you can watch that um, YouTube. So you can watch me build the first iteration of Downshift in two parts. Um, it was like all day I spent live streaming that, and then I live streamed a couple uh, recordings of working on Downshift. And um, these two parts, the entire thing was was in Code Sandbox because it's just such a really great environment to work in. Um, I really enjoy working on, in Code Sandbox. The live reload, the support for tests, like all of that, it's just really awesome. So I do on occasion 
Um, but most of the time I'm working locally. Um, but some people do. And let's see. Somebody's asking me why my MongoDB saved many records. Um, I don't know. I'm sorry. I can't. I don't know. Um, all right. I'm going to uh, jump out and I'll see you all around another time. Peace.